Hello, welcome to this video tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D inversion mesh for complicated topographies and to do a 3D forward model with ResiPy. Now I should stress I am using the latest version of ResiPy at the time of making this video so that is version 3.0. If you want to use ResiPy for 3D forward modeling you need to be using version 3.0 or above. Okay, so to start the 3D mode, we just click 3D, so that puts ResiPy in the 3D mode, and I'm going to do a forward model. The next step is to tell the software where our electrodes are. So I have a CSV file ready prepared, I'm just going to quickly grab that now. And as we're making a forward model, we now have the option to create a mesh with the electrodes that we have given the software. Okay, I can now click on the tetrahedral mesh button. Now what that's going to do is go ahead and create a 3D mesh for us. So in this window we have the electrodes displayed as black dots and the modeling mesh. And what you might notice is we have a small hill in the middle of our survey here. So we've got two perpendicular electrode lines crossing over each other on the top of this hill. Because this is a, a model, I know that the actual topography here is a lot smoother than is being portrayed in this image. So the problem is that we've only given the software the electrode positions. It doesn't know how to interpolate between the electrodes, so it's just assuming it's a flat surface. To rectify this, I'm going to import some extra topography into our model. And I, go, I do this by going back to the electrodes tab and importing a three column CSV file with X, Y and Z columns. OK. So now I'm going to try and make the mesh again, only this time the surface should be smoother. Because this is also a forward model, I'm going to reduce this growth factor. So this defines how fast the elements grow away from the surface of the modeling mesh. When forward modeling, I want finer control over how many elements I'm going to select inside of the inversion mesh. So I'm going to reduce the rate at which the elements grow away from the surface of the mesh. And again, we give that a second to create a 3D inversion mesh for us. All right, so now we have a 3D mesh with a smooth topographic surface. So the topography has been more accurately represented in this modeling mesh than it was previously. The next job, as we're doing a forward model, is to select a 3D region inside of this modeling mesh. Now, I'm trying to simulate a potential archaeological investigation. So in this case, this is a burial mound with a high resistivity target hidden inside of this small hill here. So to select a region, I enter region mode using this button. And what's happening in the background here is the software is isolating the upper surface of the inversion mesh. All the other elements in the mesh are now transparent, which means we can now interactively start to select portions of the mesh using this 3D interaction box. So I use the nodes on the box to select the area that I want. OK, now I have selected a region that I want to isolate. So I press the Add Region button. And that selected all the elements incident with this box. I also just want to add a little bit more here in the upper part of this slope. So I'm just going to slowly build up and select elements. Press the Add Region button again. As you can see, we've selected elements inside of this hill slope here. So using this box method, we can build up uh, certain resistivity regions inside of your forward model. 
Okay, so I'm now going to assign a higher than average resistivity. So region 1 in this case is all the transparent cells that we cannot see, which has a resistivity of 100 ohmmeters. And then I'm going to assign these other regions a resistivity of 500 ohmmeters to simulate a high resistivity target. And I'm going to exit the mode. So for the purposes of demonstration, we're now viewing a mesh with all of the regions and you can see the outcrop of the selected regions with the high resistivity in this image. Now we can make a forward model. In this case I am just going to do dipole-dipole arrays. Uh, you can watch my 2D forward modeling video where I demonstrate some of the other array types that we can use with ResiPy in the forward modeling mode. So I'm going to add another dipole dipole sequence here and press the forward modeling button. Now what's happening here is the software is automatically identifying the electrode lines within our survey and creating a sequence for those surface arrays. Once the forward modeling process is done, we will see a 3D pseudo section. So now we have a 3D pseudo section of the survey that we just set up. You can also see the um, electrode strings which have been identified in the identification process. Uh, so those are the electrodes which have been connected to form uh, electrode lines from which we can build a sequence. The next step is to uh, invert this data. I cover inversion settings a bit more in my 2D forward modeling section. I won't be going into those here. And now I can invert this to see what the uh, resistivity response to the forward model is. And again, 3D inversion uh, can be taxing on both your computer and on time resources, so do remain patient whilst running a 3D inversion. And I will see you once this has been finished. Okay, and now that that's finished, we now have a 3D inverted resistivity volume. So I can put some slices through this, and I'm going to do that at about x equals 30 and y equals 30. And this gives us an idea of the resistivity through the 3D volume. And as you can see, that there is a high resistivity target underneath this hill slope. So we can now go ahead and start to make an interpretation. Of course, now we can compare how this looks um, with the actual <coughs> real resistivities which we passed to the inversion software. And with that, thank you for watching this video tutorial. Uh, be sure to check out other videos with other demonstrations and uh, feel free to download the software from gitlab.com.